related to, so at present it says related to uh, a seasonal or periodic event. So if somebody wanted to set up shop, today would be a great example, right? What if someone wanted to set up a, a little stand for the last week selling solar eclipse stuff? Or it is an election year. What if somebody wants to set up a, a, a tent full of election related gear for whichever candidate one prefers? What is your feeling on that, I guess is my question. How is that different than a craft sale, I guess? Unless it's a, you know, we're on the city property versus the commercial Yeah, so property. this would just be a, some, some private entity, some small private business, usually. Like Jake's fireworks, right? They have brick and mortar buildings all over the place. Um, so this would be so. Think of this as like a private company coming in and wanting to set up shop, like we had with West Michigan Auto Exchange, wanting to set up in the tractor supply parking lot or someplace else and sell and have a tent for 2024 presidential candidate stuff, whether yeah, regardless of who it is, or like today, if they had spent the last week setting up, they were just selling stuff related to the solar eclipse t-shirts and hats and like, my question is, would you be good with that or would you prefer this language to limit it to a holiday? Christmas, Thanksgiving, well, Halloween, Independence Day? I think if you try to figure out everything, then nothing's ever gonna Nobody can come in town, nobody can do anything. That would be the overall best solution, right? Um, because you can't think of everything that somebody would want to come in and do a setup for. It. So I think the, uh, we just need to take a common sense approach to it and say, okay, you know, uh, like John said, you know, uh, seasonal and what else? Uh, I think like he said seasonal and periodic. Yeah. I wouldn't even say holidays. Just. Yeah, keep that. I would keep that out. But you know, I don't I mean, necessarily I think, again, want it vague. But if you try to think of everything, you're going to have. Here's the real that, that Yeah. I, I, I just I, I just don't want to have a situation where somebody sets up the Labor Day mattress sale, and then everyone comes in and says, "Why did you guys do that?" <laughs> and then I, I want to give them an answer, whether it's yes or no. At least you know I want to make sure that we're on the same page here and that I'm capturing what. You know. Well, that's where I think with Jessica too, right? With her input, you're going to know more uh, how the language can can and cannot be written. And then you know, after you've had that conversation, we can dive into it and say, okay, you know, we we you know, if we like this, or uh, it gives us all time to. Think of a gazillion different things that can or can't happen. So, oh, sorry, Marty. Oh, okay. I thought you were done. Um, so, if I, I kind of looked back through the history of what brought this on, and I remembered part of it as being a resident. So, um, but part of this was brought on because of this outside company coming in and creating competition well a disturbance but also competition with established businesses right is that am i remembering that that really? wasn't necessarily competition what it what it what it boiled down to is is when we had uh, all of the dealers come in and uh, explain their reasoning of the why was um, they came they sold basically in their opinion under false pretense Okay. Uh, where these people for warranty went to our dealerships expecting warranty, uh, which our dealerships didn't sell, they were used cars, uh, and it upset a lot of people. So when they came back the second time around, uh, it was when they went to tractor supply, um, again, they faced opposition about it. Uh, and at the end of the day, it became a, a safety concern of pedestrians walking, uh, vehicles driving around in that small parking lot, uh, and several other things, right? And that's, you know, that's where we came to the conclusion. And we also, at that point, noticed 
that our ordinance was uh, not up to date, it was a little bad, so it was decided to look at it, tighten it up. Uh, I, know, I know Andy's been wanting to do this for a while, so. Okay. There's, I'm a, just lot, there's a lot of things that will pop up all of a sudden. And sure. No, that makes sense. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding the basis. Because like I said, I had looked through the minutes from, it looks like it was June and July of last year. Um, so what I'm wondering, though, is do we want things that, as long as they're not causing a nuisance, to bring traffic to town if it's not causing a nuisance it's not taking away things from other established businesses in town I mean we're making fun of a Memorial Day mattress they sale but there's nobody else in town selling mattresses oh, it would <laughs> over Easter or whatever yeah. that, that is Valentine's Day I don't know um, Valentine's Day would be a good time to sell mattresses in case anybody's wondering if they want timing up for the fundraiser. Um, you could pass that along to me if you know who's in charge of that. Um, anyways, um, but, you know, as we're talking about it, do we really want to limit it or do we want to make sure that they're following the protocol of not being a nuisance, making sure they're respectful? You know, following all of these other, you know, maybe putting in more guidelines of things they have to follow as opposed to when and what they're selling. I'm wondering. Yeah, we are, I think we're all a little skittish after this last right. situation. Well, and I know that um, the political stuff came up. Do we want someone selling? You know stuff around election time and i believe there was a tent that was set up last year two years ago I, whenever the last election thing happened i believe there was someone that was selling some political propaganda and stuff too that caused some concern as well but some of theirs was using foul language and stuff too so in uh, front of uh, um, the old town of chevrolet building yeah and they just showed up and set up they, right they got shut down as soon as they, they right built. But I'm wondering if we instead build more structure around that than when and what. I don't know. That's just my thought. Hey, we're, kind of, we're going to try to make something for the legal people to right. abide by because you're always going to have the people that are just going to set up and go. Right. But do I care if it's around the holiday as long as it's filling a need, not causing a concern, and offering a service or a good that is not already being provided in the town. We're still in a public hearing. Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's okay. No, sorry. I just wanted to bring up something too. I think you're Can right. You state your name? And, I'm uh, sorry. Burl Barkis, uh, 215 West Main Street. Um, I also own Ability Weavers. We had a weaving fair a few years ago. It sounds like what you're saying, if it has to be seasonal, that would have wiped out our ability to do that. Um, we had uh, 15 vendors behind our store and the antique store behind us also did some some things for the community and it was done during COVID to bring people to town. So be careful in limiting seasonal. the seasonal because we wouldn't have qualified as seasonal. Uh, we were just- Well, season could be spring. Well, could be that's right, if you, leave it vague, if you leave it vague enough, I think- I think so, I like, the, I like the, fall. personally I like the seasonal, just leave it. And we did put you on, you did ask for a road closure on that city property. I did, I didn't have to come to planning to do that. Right, just, and you just came to, that was council's decision to... Was it? I don't know. Yeah. I thought I just called Sue and said, hey, can I do this? I don't know. <laughs> just, just throwing that out there, that you might want to not live it too tightly. Right. Maybe we should have the attorney look at it and see if there is any holes that she would close and uh, we think about it for till next month. That's fine. Sure. Is there any other public comment? Sure. <laughs> you know he's going to say something. I know, that's why. Uh, Eric Barkas, and to your point, I, I totally agree with you. Um, maybe Andy can clarify, but when an entity wants to set up a business, 
they're, they have to meet six criteria, and I, I'm sorry, I forget what you call them, but they're, you, they have to be um, an, answerable as far as security and pedestrian safety, and so there are, I think, those mechanisms in place. But I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, your liability insurance and stuff. Right. Right. Let's see what Jessica's got to say. Okay, if there's, is there any other more public comments? Okay, I would like to call this uh, public hearing. Um, I think there should be a motion to table this for a month so there's, the record has some action in here. So there's motion to table, I'll bring it back. Okay, I would entertain a motion to uh, table back. this until next month. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. To I'll table support. this. I'll support. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Okay, we will look forward to seeing that next month then. Okay, public hearing is closed. Uh, master plan update. Uh, you all should have received some uh, stuff from Andy, right? Yep. So uh, this is, and I apologize in advance, a little bit of a homework assignment for you all. So what we have here is, um, we have, we're almost all the way through all of our various public comment and public input activities that we've done for the master plan. So we went, starting last summer, we did the, um, we went to one of the uh, concerts. We were going to go to a second concert, but we got rained out. Um, we went to the middle school. We uh, had visioning sessions with the planning commission and with the DDA. Um, we went to the expo a couple weeks ago. Uh, already made sure that we ran out of every supply that we had. It was great. We had pennies because you've never tried to bring back. Um, yeah, it was so it was a really successful event. And then next week we have city council and the parks commission are kind of go through their visioning activity as well. So, uh, yeah. so in a couple of weeks, then we will have like a like a public engagement report that'll summarize all the feedback and all the comments that we've gotten from from the public. Um, that is, and so the purpose of that report is going to be to inform you guys and how you make and write policy for the master plan. The primary way that you do that is is through the goals and objectives, and so that's what this worksheet is. So this isn't something that you need to do right now, and we don't need to spend time on it right now. Um, but this is something that we're, that we're going to need to talk about at the next meeting. And so what we did is we took the goals and objectives from the 2007 plan and dropped them right into this table here. And so basically, we just want you to go through each of the goals and objectives statements and indicate whether they should be kept or removed or that they should be combined with something else or if they should be revised or if you want to add new stuff, um, feel free to do that as well. So there's a bunch of different categories. So on page, um, you know, starting on page two, we have growth and development is the category and there's a goal underneath that that talks about goals, economic and energy. There's another one that talks about uh, cooperative efforts with surrounding townships for industrial development. On the third page, there's a, there's a heading called community image, and there's a goal there with a couple of objectives. On page four, we have the heading of land use that has a goal with several objectives underneath each one. On page five, there's transportation as a heading, and then there's two goals in each one of those. So again, you kind of see the pattern here, basically one you to evaluate what you currently have in the master plan. Because I think a lot of what you're, is in your current plan is fine. It doesn't need to be changed that much. Uh, but it's then almost 20 years. And so I do think that there's going to be some room to, to adjust things, maybe some things you've pretty much accomplished and you might want to just take them off the list. There's going to be some areas where you want to add, add new stuff that isn't even talked about at all in here. Right? So there's going to be something where um, we might be wanting to uh, encourage a certain type of housing or riverfront development or I don't know, something in here that's not really adequately addressed. We want that to be added here. So 
for the next meeting, I want to kind of talk about what your, kind of go through what you all come up with. Um, and as soon as we get it done, we will distribute to you the public engagement report that contains all the input from the public that we received at all the events, you and the, the survey, and all the comments, and all the counts for the penny jars, and everything that we've done, um, and kind of package that up into a report that you can read through, and, and, and we'll provide some analysis too, but in reading through that, you'll really be able to glean what people are concerned about, how they want the city to grow with all. So sort of with that in the back of your mind, we want you to uh, tackle this worksheet for the next meeting. Um, from there, we'll start really, you know, uh, getting, you know, we'll be getting down to the last couple of chapters of the plan. And that's really where we're going to be doing the strong planning, you know, part of the document. So um, are there questions about anything in here, or what we're asking you to do? When you say combine, I was like, we're going to combine, like A and B combine, or I mean, Yeah, so I mean sometimes um, people will come up with uh, ways that you can sort of combine some of the goals or some of the objective statements if they're related. You know, they'll want to combine it into one statement and then they'll give them room to put in a couple of new ones. Okay. Um, that might not be viable here given how this is written, but we always need it there as an option. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. That is all that I have for now. Um, and I expect that we'll be spending a decent chunk of our next meeting going through and talking about this. So I, and when we were up there, Eric notes, Andy did a wonderful job. <clears throat> I helped by getting all the pennies going because he said he never used all the pennies. Let me help you with that. Um, <laughs> I have a picture of what is your vision for Main Street that we took, and if anybody would like to see it, and it, it was actually kind of fun, but uh, I don't think people quite got the sticky note concept because we had 40 Aldi's put on here, and mm -hmm. um, it was actually kind of fun, but people were enjoying it, and what I noticed there was is... Uh, even people that didn't live in the town, in the city, uh, once Andy explained to them that you're helping us get better at what we do, uh, I think they were generally uh, happy to help. Mm -hmm. um, and it went, they went, well, do I put one penny in one? Or Andy's like, no, you can put as many pennies per jar as you would like. And I've seen a couple of them jars, which I'm curious to see the results, that were uh, quite full. Yeah. Um, so. Good job. Yeah, we probably had 100, 150 people do the penny jars, I would guess. Um, These are all old. So it was, it was, it was, it was, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. We had that, we had the West Main uh, exercise where people could basically just, from the railroad tracks to the city limits, just sort of what's your vision, how do you want things to be improved? And yeah, some people just, and this happens all the time, they just say, I want all of or I want to. Mm -hmm. You know, IHOP or whatever the business well, we is that KFC. they like. Yeah, KFC or Wendy's or something. Um, they will do that. But, but even when they write something like that, a lot of people, it didn't have to be Aldi. They were just like, we want a small scale grocer, something they can right. do with Meyer that we can just swing in and grab something, you know, something like that. So that helps us to, you know, all of that comments, you know, we can. I, mean, I can't write Aldi in the plan specifically, but we can talk about the types of uses that Aldi would fit into and what they're looking for, and that I think can be helpful. Or like a small, a small uh, uh, grocery right that only has a limited yeah. know, footprint, but offers a lot of necessity yep. items. So. Yep. And some people don't talk about businesses at all. They're talking about um, you know this trail really needs to connect over here. This sidewalk is. Terrible, need to be repaired, or traffic needs to slow down, or you know, maybe fewer lanes, or more lanes, or you know, all, all kinds of, of, of different topic areas. So I think it, it's it's helpful for us just to kind of hear this broad, you know, idea, idea gathering from the from from the community. So yeah, we'll have the results of all of it. Um, we'll get that out to you as soon as we're done uh, next week. I'll wrap it up, except for the. 
draft open house. Um, but we'll have a lot of a lot of information to sit through, so we'll pass that along as soon as we can. Okay, so you want to screen this back, fill out, and do text, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yep. Um, if I could, uh, Eric Barkas, uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize Andy. He did, he did a great job at the expo. I did a two-hour shift for the city. I think he did the whole, the whole mm -hmm. thing. So that, um, eight to one or two. So good job. He was very good with the crowd. Um, the reason I'm here, Marty and I attended the M M Michigan Municipal League convention three weeks ago, and I, I attended the housing presentations. There were four architects, and this was all afternoon. And their main theme, um, they talked a lot about many communities are improving their master plans right now. And so you're right on board on this. And they kept, um, one, one, I had three takeaways that I just wanted to pass on. One was that you as a board need to decide when you update the master plan whether you're going for um, shorter term helps for developers or longer term growth of properties. And I don't totally understand this and, and I haven't had a chance to ask Andy about this, but there was sort of a distinction when you rewrite your master plan whether you want to make shorter term growth or longer term uh, increase in property values. And again, I'm sorry, I don't totally understand that, but I have the architect's name and the presentations, if, if that rings any bells, number one. Number two, they kept talking about uh, setting up uh, neighborhood enterprise zones, and I don't know if that fits into the master plans, but a number of communities were, re were improving their housing using these enterprise zones. And then lastly, uh, they were using a lot of missing middle grants. So uh, again, if you want uh, those presentations, I, I have access to that. But uh, you're, you're right on track for improving the master plan right now. So thank you. Erica reads up a thing I was thinking about, too. I, I don't know the legal aspects of this, but could you differentiate items in the master plan on things that are more subject to change at a quicker pace versus, you know, uh, snail pace, molasses roll of other ordinances that really don't change? I mean, can we differentiate that and set up two different timelines? Yeah, so what, what we often do and what a lot of communities do in their master plans is when you sort of get to the end and you have a, a, a list of stuff to do. So in, in this plan too, at the end of it, and I'm not sure what the list looks like yet, but there will be um, a, a list of specific tasks that the city needs to accomplish. And your current plan has this too, it just isn't that long of a list, we've gotten a lot of it done. But it'll say, you know, major zoning ordinance to do this, it'll say establish a I don't know, corridor improvement authority for that, or they'll give you a whole list of things. And, 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 and to those, we can sort of attach, this is a short-term priority, this is a long-term priority, recognizing that some of these things are gonna be really long-term. I mean, some of this, in some of the other communities that, that where, where we work, they have priorities about, you know, widening or modifying their main street or, or something like that, which if that's an MRO, like it is here, that might be a 20 year priority to get on the list and to get that done and work with them and get the design you want and on and on and on. So um, yeah, we'll talk specifically in the, in the plan about things that are really long term goals versus things where it's a short short term, hey, let's, let's get this done right now. So like in your old plan, one of the things that we did pretty early on within the first five years or so was adopt the mixed use zoning district that we currently have. That was written in there as a specific thing to do, adopt a mixed use zone, create a mixed use zoning district in your zoning map, and your ordinance, and we did that. Um, it took us several months, but um, we got it done, and I think the, the results have been, have been pretty good overall for how that went, but that was something where we there was a specific direction about what to do, and then we did it. And that was a fairly small thing that only took a few months. Some of these might take years and so we'll talk about those and acknowledge the reality that some of these things aren't going to happen. Especially the ones that are going to involve MDOT or Eagle or you know, whoever, you know, these are 10, 20, 30 year 
horizons on some of these projects. Some of them will be quick. Okay. Um, I have a question on what is the difference between a staff report and commissioner remarks? Staff report? Staff yes. report is something that Sue and or myself would report to you. And commissioner remarks is you guys as commissioners can say whatever you want. Okay. Within reason. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's whatever you want, but you know, within the boundaries of good, good decorum and so forth. Okay. Um, I look forward. Thank you, Andy, again for spending Saturday out there with everybody, too. Uh, staff report. Sue? I have nothing further. And Andy? Good. Okay, commissioners. Uh, Mike? Go. Oh. Uh, Go ahead and expound on what you were talking about before. Uh, no, I mean, I think I just I said what I said because it was on my mind. I, I think the general sentiment is that as a uh, planning commission, you know, you're trying to engage community and create, um, you know, uh, uh, a sense of uh, community involvement. And so, you know, at the very least, uh, to the degree that, you know, uh, everything we do is perceived as somewhat constructive, you know, you want to try to at least, um, uh, you don't want to create bad vibes with by uh, um, awkwardly, you know, transferring um, leadership and in a way that led to, you know, like someone's complete disengagement and stuff like that. So um, just, uh, I think I, The, uh, the, as I said, I was, I was been thinking about this for quite some time. Just the, it's an election, so it's kind of has to be abrupt a little bit because we're like, okay, let's elect new officers, and if there's two people, and there's discussion, and we vote. But then also the the change of hands was way too abrupt for myself. I mean, I had run meetings in the past, so but but if I had to jump right in. I didn't even know I was going to be elected, and all of a sudden here I am trying to run a meeting without an exchange of okay, this is how we do it. You know, this is what this is. Um, it was very, uh, very cold shower. <laughs> um, I don't know. I would like to discuss this at a later date, maybe about uh, possibly a better way to do it, whether it be in the year prior, say hey. What do you think? You still want to do this? Do you want to, do you want to change hands and then give at least a month to the new people to get used to how things are run, maybe, or how things, what things even are, um, versus at your meeting. Ooh, oh, uh, I think that would uh, help new officers if they were elected, and maybe help the transition. Yeah, I think just more discussion was necessary there. Not like it doesn't. I don't know how it's gone on in the past. I've not got a lot of experience with, with these things and so on. But I guess my assumption was that it had been talked about to some degree among the, the group or whatever, and, and that you know, and then, um, uh, but apparently it was just sort of uh, everybody dealing with it there on the spot, and like you know, that's not. When someone's put in a bunch of their own personal time for a couple of years on it and so on, it's like, you know, it's like a big. Yeah, Bruce did a lot. I mean, I, I was, I was taken back that everybody was like, yep, 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 yep. I was like, whoa, whoa. I was, well, that's what I was a little bit like, I think everybody assumes like, oh, well, there's been a discussion here that I wasn't really for. Oh, okay, that's not there. You know, and like, it seems to be normal that like every couple of years you would. On to like get a fresh mm -hmm. someone you know someone running the show or whatever like doesn't I don't have any problem with it I just think you do them the courtesy of like talking about it beforehand or hey you know maybe that should be a maybe that should be a norm maybe yeah. two year service or uh, two year rotation yeah. I know other organized 
entities. You know, you, you served X amount of years, and then you had to take time off as an officer. There are a couple of things that we can do, I think, as a suggestion. So one is that Mike requested that we, and we will we'll do this, but that we provide some training. You guys, specifically, we have two new planning commission members now who are going to need to be brought up to speed on all of this stuff. So that's something that we will be working on. But then I think in addition to that, it might be helpful um, that when we have a light agenda that we spend some time and just kind of go through, and this sounds really boring, but we go through our planning commission bylaws in terms of what's in there, what you got to do, how the agenda is, because that spells out how the agenda is put together, what order it's in, um, when and how you call a meeting and election of officers and all this kind of stuff. So I think that might be helpful if we just go through there and I can help you from my my seat as someone who goes to a lot of these meetings and a lot of different places. Um, you know, I think I can just sort of share what seems to work for other communities. Um, and of course, you're free to do whatever you want, but at least I can give you some examples of what works and maybe some things that doesn't seem to work very well. But those are, are, are two things that I think, especially the bylaws are helpful just for, from, for, for you guys knowing kind of the mechanics of running and meeting and listening and motions and seconds and when you do a roll call vote versus a voice vote or how the agenda is set or when, when you have to worry about quorums and conflicts of interest or if you only have five people here and three people vote for something, does that mean it passes? I don't know. You gotta look at the bylaws for that kind of thing. So it, it'll answer a lot of questions, and I think it'll sort of help help bring you guys all up to speed, and we can provide copies of those um, as well. So that's something that we can bring up at a future meeting when we have some time. Yeah, and if you, as it's been said before, this, the city budgets money every year for the planning commission to go uh, take classes and, and learn. <clears throat> uh, when Eric and I go, uh, there's classes we can take, I take personally, uh, because I sit on this board. So um, to keep me up to speed and you know, knowledgeable about uh, the different things coming down. The other thing is, is I don't know if you guys are all receiving uh, the Michigan Planning uh, Magazine. Uh, you are? Yeah, yeah I do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's lots of good information in that too. And it always gives you times where you can go take a class. Uh, like I said, there's money budgeted for it. And I would like to see everybody at these classes. Thank you. Again, thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, do you have any thoughts? First meeting? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. So, no. Good. That good, good. Uh, John? Nothing to add. Nothing to add? Okay, I am good. I think I've spoken my mind. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll support. All in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed, same. Aye. No. <laughs> <laughs>